Welcome to Equity Mates. My name is Bryce and always I am joined by my equity mate, Ren. And as always, I should say, <laughs> how are you going? We started strong today. We how are you going? Nice. I'm very good. I'm looking forward to this episode. Um, on For the last few years, you know, a big focus for our community has been exchange traded funds, yep. ETFs. And for the first time uh, since we stepped out from behind the microphone and in front of the camera, we're going to talk about ETFs on this show. That's it, Ren. We um, understand that, as you said, it is a pretty important topic to our community. And uh, ETFs are providing an awesome opportunity for um, you know, beginner investors to access, access markets that otherwise would have been pretty difficult to yeah, touch on. I think any investor in that sort of millennial age bracket uh, in their 20s... Now, we know you're just clinging to your 20s at this point. <laughs> Dear life. But... Um, <laughs> Will be that anyone sort of our age will be familiar with them. Probably will have invested in them. They've, um, I guess, revolutionised the way that we can access the market in terms of cost. Um, far cheaper than managed funds, and also just the exposure you get to different themes, but more importantly, different markets around the world. Yeah. yeah. Now we won't go into the ins and outs of ETFs on this episode. We have done a three-part series with Beta Shares on Get Started Investing podcast, so make sure you go and check that out. But. Uh, over the next sort of few minutes, we're going to have a, a bit of a discussion around some of the key areas that Alec and I think are, are going to be uh, areas of growth and opportunity for investors over the next sort of 10 years or so. And then to close out, we'll be bringing in the experts from Beta Shares to tell us to, how we're wrong. To tell us how <laughs> we're wrong. And we've got Elon um, to, uh, to help us close that conversation out, which we're looking forward to. But Ren, let's start from the start. Uh, tech, obviously, has got to yeah. be the number one. Well, I think, I, I think the important caveat here is that, um, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of articles, uh, stocks to buy for 2021. Yeah. We're, ETFs, we're long-term investors and yes. ETFs generally, you want to think longer term. So we're doing ETFs for the 2020s. Yes. Forget 2021, we're thinking 2029. 2021 to 2030. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, first one, as you said, uh, the continued dominance of big tech. Yeah, continued yeah. dominance of big tech. And there are an, a number of ETFs that are starting to play in this space. But what I'm excited about is we're starting to move away from you know, an ETF that just tracks the NASDAQ 100 and we're starting to get some thematics come in that are touching on things like aut autonomous technology, robotics, um, artificial intelligence. These are the sort of sectors that I think are going to be ones that are important to stay close to as they dominate a lot of industries over the next sort of 10 years. What's your thoughts? Uh, I completely agree. Even things like esports and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're talking a day after we did an episode on Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple all having record-breaking quarters. Yeah. Uh, the, those big tech platforms aren't going anywhere, and yeah. um, you know, they seem to all be dominating at the moment. And so, an Nasdaq 100 ETF, which you can buy on the ASX. Or some of those thematic ones are, um, are really interesting ways to, to yeah. get exposure. You've obviously got your beta shares, uh, ATEC, which is uh, an Australian-focused one that I've um, personally invested in and uh, have sort of really enjoyed watching over the last sort of 12 months. But uh, nothing is more hot at the moment than ARC Innovation over yeah, in the States. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you haven't heard about Kathy Wood, suggest you go and look, that up, uh, look her up and see what she's doing over there. Pretty phenomenal stuff. So um, what else... Do we oh, have an eye I, on? Yeah. Uh, the next theme, I think, um, otherwise we could talk about tech all day, yeah. but um, biotech. Yeah. For me, there's so much innovation happening in, that, in this space at the moment. You know, new cancer cures, new drugs coming to market, everything around like CRISPR technology, you know, um, uh, sequencing the genome, uh, the cost of that has come down and what that will mean in terms of like personalised medicine. The 2020s, I feel, will be... Uh, really interesting decade for biotech. Yeah. So there's a couple of ETFs that uh, track that. ARC uh, in the US have one. Uh, there's an S&P biotech uh, ETF in Australia that tracks some of the big US biotech names. Um, but yeah, a really interesting theme, I think. Yeah, and if you look at uh, you know what was pitched at the Sewn Hearts and Mind conference late last year, a lot of uh, thematic coming out coming out of that as well but um if we move on yeah we're got, ripping through these yes we've got <laughs> asian growth asian growth i mean uh i've uh, been talking about tencent a lot on the podcast yes. I'm, in, I'm in love with that company um but it's all of it's there's so many great companies uh coming out of asia and there's a lot of growth um coming out of asia 
some of the recent ones that have hit, you know, the Chinese companies that have hit the New York Stock Exchange, you know, the Pinduo duos, the Meituans of the world um, are, are doing incredibly well and there's no, no reason that that will stop in the 2020s. Absolutely. And India at all-time highs at the moment as well. So there is a IIND, beta shares India quality that uh, you can jump on if you're looking to follow uh, the Indian yeah. market, Ren. And but and the, to name check another one that I like, the Asian technology tigers, uh, the ticket code is Asia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And to close out, Ren, uh, sustainability, something that is very important to uh, our community of investors, um, the ESG space, and one that, uh, you know, a lot of interest is starting to, to come. So one that is difficult to find an ETF that sort of matches your view on sustainability, but we're seeing a lot of a lot more come to market. You've, you've opened a uh, can of worms. <laughs> Let's not, not go there, about yes. Because uh, we do only have 15 minutes for this, but I think the long and the short of it is there are so many uh, sustainable ETFs out there, both in Australia and uh, internationally, um, that you know, if you want to invest ethically and uh, you want to sort of put your money to work for companies that are trying to do good or trying to do better. Um, there's a whole raft of sustainable focused products. Yeah. yeah. Well, to get a view on uh, the ETF industry over the next 10 years or so, there is probably no better person than to welcome to the show uh, co-founder of BetaShares, Elan Israelston. Yeah, it's uh, thank you for joining us here on uh, the Equimates TV show for, for something new. Uh, Elan, we've got you on to, to talk through, I guess, what your view is of the uh, ETF sort of landscape over the next um, 10 years or so. So if we start off by sort of asking, what are some of the key themes that you expect to really play out or be popular in, in the ETF space over the next 10 years? You know, I was listening to you guys and I think you've stolen my fire. I, I really find it very <laughs> difficult to argue, to argue with any of the things you, you've mentioned. I must say, almost word for word, I would have called out most of the things you, just, you guys just spoke about. So it either means we're both singing in violent agreement or we're both terribly wrong. Um, I suspect <laughs> hopefully, the, hopefully the former of the two. But yeah, I mean, I have to just agree with you. The firstly, you know, just this continued adoption and growth in the technology sector. You know, just thinking about how we've all been working from home. I mean, right now I'm in the office, but there's been a fair bit of working from home going on in recent times. And, you know, I think the working from home scenario will become much, le much less a reaction to COVID and more an entrenched behavior around the world. Mm. So people's working styles, you know, have changed forever and technology will be a major recipient of that as if they needed anything else to grow that particular sector. That's just yet one more really strong, really strong theme. And I 100% agree with you about what you're, you were talking about in terms of Asian growth. The Asian story is, is very, very interesting in the technology space. The companies there are, are literally changing the lives of billions and billions of people in Asia and increasingly starting to come into, in, into, into the rest of the developed world as well, if you think about a company like a TikTok or a Tencent. Mm. You know, so I think, I think technology is still, to me, a major theme for the next, uh, you know, the next decade. Um, you know, and then just digging down a little bit further into that, you did mention thematics such as robotics, another fat, uh, area we're particularly fond of. But one that we you didn't mention, and maybe the biggest one in my mind is infra is 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 actually cybersecurity. Mm. Um, in many ways, it's the foundation in a way these days of all the technology that gets built. Sort of reminds me of a house in a way. You know, you need those foundations to be strong before you can build up the actual the actual house itself. So, you know, the rise and rise of cybercrime, um, again, just tying it back to the working from home situation, far less secure systems working from home, so many devices connected to the internet now, you know, whether it be sensors or cameras or home entertainment systems. And so cybercrime, I heard that, uh, I think it was McAfee uh, said something about, put out a report that said that cybercrime cost the, um, the global economy one trillion US dollars last year. So with all that tremendous growth comes, you know, comes the continued growth of the cybersecurity industry. And then the third one I'd call out would be the one you've already mentioned, climate change, ethical investing. I, there's so many reasons, but I think one the political obvious reason about Biden, you know, Biden in the White House, very obviously focused on that space comparatively to, to Trump before him. And so climate change businesses will get a kick from that, you know, a political kick. And then demographic you know i think younger investors such as many of the ones that will be watching the show they've always had a focus on ethical investing and i just think they're just going to continue to seek out ways to invest in a way that aligns you know aligns with their values i think there's a pretty good chance you know in 10 years time or so we'll no longer be talking about ethical investing we'll just talk about investing 
which happens to be ethical as a default. So mm. yeah, those would be the three I would I would call out. You know, technology more broadly. You know, the actually the actual infrastructure of all technology, which is the cyber security, and then climate change and ethical investing. Mm. Oh, well, Elon, I'm reassured that we're uh, thinking about the same themes. Um, that, that's, a, that's a positive <laughs> sign. I, I think yeah. that climate change conversation is a really interesting one. And I think it will uh, be of interest to a lot of people in our community um, who are you know, quite young and obviously quite conscious of what the impact of climate change will be. Are there any particular ETFs you like, either in Australia or around the world, uh, that really give investors exposure to those companies fighting climate change? Yeah, look, I mean, there are. I mean, it's a very big space and a growing space, both abroad and and um, and in Australia. In Australia, uh, we run a, a pretty significant uh, set of products that do uh, what we believe is is true to label ethical investing. And so Ethi is the one you've, you've mentioned before. Um, it's a very large fund now. It's over a billion dollars in assets and it's global uh, global sustainability leaders. So those companies need to be, first of all, better than their quite significantly better than average in terms of climate change impact, but then also they're not allowed to do a whole lot of things that we screen out negatively. So this concept of positive and negative screen, a whole lot of things that we screen out negatively to make sure they don't do it, whether it be the way they treat their workforce, diversity in the, in, in, on boards, um, you know, alcohol, uh, tobacco, and that type of stuff. So Ethi is one. We have an Australian version called FAIR as well. And we even have one that tracks the bond, uh, the ethical bond space called GBND. So, um, um, and to make matters even easier for investors, what we've recently done, and you may not have noticed them yet, but those only were launched in December, is we've actually launched all in one ETFs that are ethically oriented. So they basically can invest, an investor can come and take a high growth um, investment across all asset classes, and it will be ethically screened. So we'll be essentially investing in our ETFs that I just mentioned in a single in a single product. Mm. One of the most popular ones there is the DZZF. It's an ethical diversified high growth fund. Mm. Uh, overseas as well, a huge huge range, even more even more nuanced than here. You know, you've got solar, solar energy, clean water, climate change ETFs. So yeah, a lot to talk about there in that regard. Mm. Yeah. Now, Elon, we have spoken a lot about themes, but um. You know, the original ETF was all about tracking market indexes. And uh, I want to ask you, um, before, we, before we lose you today, uh, what, what are some of the market indexes that you think will perform particularly well in the 2020s? Yeah, look, it's very hard to go past the NASDAQ 100. I know you mentioned it before, but it's just the companies that are in that index are exposed to the companies that we use every single day, right? So even right now, we're using, I'm using Skype. It's a Microsoft company. It's part of the, it's part of the NASDAQ 100. I'm sure we'd be using in the studio there, there'd be some Apple product. You know, there's likely Google being used by the producers trying to look up things. So it's very, very hard to go past the NASDAQ 100 in every regard. The companies in that is being used by, by everybody. So, in that regard, NDQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, is pretty interesting. You know, it's re I think it's returned about 20% every year since it's launched about six years ago. It's a very, very interesting one. Um, and then Asia, as well, was mentioned by you, Ren. You know, those, um, for more context for investors, these are the largest 50 technology companies, ex excluding Japan. So it includes Tencent and Baidu, which is the Google of China, and JD.com, which is known as the Amazon of, of China. I think... You've got a double whammy, you know, they've managed to handle, the Asian markets have managed to handle COVID far better than other parts of the world. But they're also benefiting from, you know, the forces that we just spoke about before technology wise. And the performance in that ETF, um, you said um, many of your uh, listeners or, or viewers would know about it. It's really been quite, quite amazing. I think it's done about 40%, you know, since its launch, about 70% in the last 12 months. You know, we can't expect that to continue day in, day out, but it certainly has been an excellent, excellent performer. Well, Elon, uh, speaking of Tencent, it would be awesome if BetaShares could give us a direct exposure ETF solely with Tencent in it because <laughs> it's impossible to buy direct exposure to Tencent. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. Uh, a massive thank you for um, joining us on Equity Mates today. Uh, and I hope that our audience was able to take some value from, um, from what you provided. So thank you very much. Thanks. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of another episode of Equity Mates. As I said, hopefully there was something in there that was uh, valuable to your investing journey. If you would like more information on Equity Mates, you can head to Equity Mates uh, at 
<laughs> you can, <laughs> he's yeah. forgotten our website. Uh, you can head to equitymates.com. Uh, now, stick around and or join us tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing another watch list Wednesday. Uh, we're bringing it back for the second time. And uh, we'll be speaking to Henry Jennings of Marcus today and hearing about two stocks on his watch list. <laughs>